Hello, this is Trent Chapman, Fix Your Funnel. Excited today to share with you the strategies that will help you to grow your business and increase your lead conversion. One of the biggest problems that I see with the way that people do their follow-up is they don't think through the customer experience enough. Now, I know we all think about our customers or prospects and we think about our um, onboarding process maybe or our sales process, but a lot of times we miss the little nuances of what would make it a great experience for the person that we're talking to, the message we're trying to convey to them so they want to do business with us. Now, I'm going to share a couple scenarios. First of all, I'll go into the tactics and how you can execute on those scenarios. Uh, let's say that I have a salesperson that's doing follow-up phone calls to leads. Um, after that salesperson has an initial conversation with somebody, they're probably going to want to have a follow-up conversation if that person doesn't buy on that first phone call. Now, depending on your sales process, you might have a one-call close, you might have a three-call close, you might have a six or nine-month sales uh, cycle, but it just really depends on how your business sells, what you sell, what your price point is, um, et cetera. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk it's pretty generic, pretty broad, but I want to help you to understand some key concepts that have helped us and our customers have better success with lead conversion and better success of making that connection with your lead or your prospect or your customer so they feel like you're listening to them, you understand them, and they feel like they're having a good experience in this journey of learning about how your product can benefit them or serve them. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, first of all, one of the biggest things that we notice with um, lead follow-up and sales follow-up is that salespeople don't like automation. I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm gonna put that as the first thing is salespeople, oh, wrong thing, salespeople. So this could be yourself, it could be an employee you have. Um, they usually tell me that they hate automation. Now, why do you think that is? The number one reason I hear that automation sucks by salespeople is because they just had a conversation with somebody and then an automated text or email or something was sent out that didn't jive with the conversation. And so a lot of people are hesitant to use automation when they're in sales because they've had bad experiences with automation stepping on their toes or making it sound impersonable. And then they feel like, I just lost that connection with that customer or that prospect. So that's, that's one of the biggest things we hear is that they hate automation because it basically it steps on their toes. Um, the other thing that we hear quite often is that um, in, in the sales or customer support journey, people feel like there's not a good way to follow up with somebody without setting like a calendar right, reminder and then doing a personal follow up. Now with, with automation, with CRMs, you can do with some automated follow up and it's cool. We'll talk about that. But there's often a missing piece there in that it's hard to make automation feel personalized and feel personal. If I have a conversation with you and then I send a random email, a random text a week later that has nothing to do with our conversation, you'll feel like I'm either crazy or you'll know it's automated and it loses its value. Now, automation is great. We use it in our business all the time, but there's certain points in which automation can be hindering to your progress or your success. So I created here a, 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 um, a quadrant here, and this is how we can increase engagement. And when we increase engagement, the goal here is to increase conversion, whether it be customer, customer engagement, whether it be prospect engagement, um, or whatever you call your, your patient, or whatever it is, we want to increase engagement so there's connection with our brand or our company so they're more likely to do more business with us, do business with us in the first place, send us referrals, leave us a positive review, whatever it may be that help us to build our brand and build our company. Um, we're going to start right here in this bottom left quadrant here, so the manual quadrant. So often what we see with people doing, doing follow-up in their new business, they will do a lot of manual follow-up and they maybe get like um, a CRM, right? They might have like Infusionsoft or Keep or another CRM, and they might be doing some manual follow-up using a templated campaign. All right, that's great. Um, in this case, if we want to do an increased engagement using text messaging, we would use the Picture Funnel and a Save Reply plus your calendar to remind you. Now, in the Picture Funnel mobile app, you can um, create a Save Reply. So maybe it's like a frequently asked question. You're answering this question all the time. You can save that in the mobile app or in the desktop messenger as a saved reply. Then access that saved reply um, and then maybe send it out at a later date as part of the calendar reminder to send something out. Now this, this is very, very manual, right? You're using some templates such as a saved reply so it's easier to do, but it's still a manual process and that you have to, on that date, get the reminder, pull up your phone, pull up the contact, and then schedule, or sorry, then send out that reply that's a saved reply. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very old school, very slow, very, you know, you could do that. Um, it does make sure that you don't have automation stepping on your toes because you're still manually doing something in order for that to happen. Now, 
the, the, the upper left quadrant here, this is where most of our customers play. They are using Keep and Fix Your Funnel together to send out campaign messages. Let's say a new lead comes in, I'm gonna send a text message with a link to a video or maybe a, a PDF or some sort of lead magnet fulfillment and then I'll ask a question maybe a couple hours later or the next day with a follow-up text message. Those might be automated campaign messages that are in a Keep campaign triggering an HTTP post to fire up a text message from Fix Your Funnel using your phone number. Now, those are great. A lot of our customers have a lot of success doing that, using automation, but also using templates. So there's not a lot of thought and effort has to go into that to ongoing communicate with customers and prospects. Now, there's another quadrant here for doing personal and um, manual, personalized but manual follow-up. So this might be, I'm not sending the same message to every person. I do want to send a very personalized message. Maybe it's a patient or a customer, or maybe it's a, a, sales, a sales lead that I had a conversation with, and I want to send a very personalized follow-up to them. What I could do is put in a calendar reminder and then reach out to that contact manually by text, by phone, by email, whatever the case may be. But these, again, th these have a lot of human error that cause them to fail. So we consistently see that when salespeople rely on a calendar reminder to do something, they'll often start to ignore those reminders and they'll often fall behind because they have so much going on that then it doesn't get done at all. And obviously the benefit is gone of having a personalized follow-up if the follow-up never happens. So keep that in mind. Now in the top right quadrant, this is what I want to focus on today. And that's how we can, how we can use automation, but still make it feel personalized. Now we get the best of both worlds. Using automation is great. It increases our leverage, it makes it so we can do more with less. But again, often we get into that groove of using automation so much that it becomes too templated and it doesn't feel personalized and then people know it's just automated and then it loses some of that, that, that benefit, right? So with, with Fix Your Funnel in the mobile app, we have what's called scheduled messages. And I did not prepare well for this because I should have had it all ready to go on my screen share here. But I'm gonna show you my screen on my phone just real quick here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new message. Again, I should have been way more prepared than this. Um, and in this message here, what I'm gonna do is set schedule or a reply to go out in the future. So instead of just texting this person right now, um, I don't wanna send a response right now. I could type it in there, right? It's probably too bright there, causing a little bit of a glare. But I could just type in right there a response to that person, right? And then send that message off to them. But what I wanna do is type in this response, how was your son's business fair at his school last week? Now this is something that happened with my, my son last week, he had a business fair, and so maybe I had a sales conversation and the person I talked to told me, yeah, my son's got a business fair coming up on Saturday, and he's super excited about it, but I gotta help him get ready for that. Well, let's talk next week after that. And so I'm gonna follow up with them, and on here I have the option of choosing the little uh, camera, or sorry, not the camera, the little um, clock icon there. When I tap on that clock icon, what's gonna happen is give me, it gives me some options to choose a date and time. And I can choose the date and time that I want this to go out. So I'm gonna say, let's send this out next Monday and at, uh, let's say, 1.45 p.m. All right, now that I've got that scheduled, you'll see on there that there's a scheduled message to go out on Monday at, uh, 1.40 p.m. Now, anytime before that time happens, I can always tap here and I can cancel that message so I don't have to send it. Um, if I want to delete that follow-up and not have it go out, I, whenever I get a response back or something else happens in that, in that process of selling this person um, or having a sales conversation with them, I might be able to go in here, see that there's a scheduled reply, but they've been texting me about something else. I can just go ahead and delete that and now it's not gonna go out in the future. But here's the benefit here. Now, instead of just sending out a templated message, as soon as I get off a sales conversation or I talk to a new customer or I talk to a, a patient, if you're a doctor or a dentist or whatever, you might think, okay, well, I'm gonna have to remember all this stuff and send it out later. But what you can do is as soon as you end that, that engagement or that one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, phone call or in-person uh, meeting with that person, you just simply pull up the phone, schedule a reply to go out to them and put something personal in it. And as you'll see here, what I said in the top right here, the sweet spot of this is that you talk about a specific topic or event that was discussed. Now, obviously, if you're a doctor, there's some HIPAA compliance there. You don't want to send out personal private information through text. 
But if you talked about something in that um, in that procedure in that in that event where you're with the person one on one or that phone call, you want to reference something specific to that topic or event you discussed, so that when you do that follow up text, they're going to be thinking, "There's no way this is automated because we talked about this personally. It wasn't like he would know to put this in automation or follow up." What this does is, is, is this increases the engagement. Now, by using scheduled messages, there is a little bit more effort. I'll, I'll give you that much. There's gonna be some extra effort because after every personal interaction I have by phone or by in person or whatever, with a prospect or lead or customer, if I wanna use this, that's gonna be a trigger for me to then think, okay, what can I do to send this out to this person? As an example, we have a dentist and instead of at night, at six or seven at night, pulling up his phone and texting all his patients he saw that day, after each, each patient is done, he'll pull up his phone, write the, the personalized message, hey, this is Dr. So-and-so, just wanted to check in and see how things are going. Let me know if there's any questions or concerns. Have a good night. And then he schedules that to go out. Now he might put in something again, to, to supercharge this, you wanna put something that's personalized. That's how you get to the sweet spot. Personalize that based on their interaction. Like, hey, glad you could come in today. It's good to hear about your son, or it's good to hear about your schooling, how things are going. Talk about something personal that was relevant to your conversation and then schedule that to go out. That, that dentist gets so many reviews and so many positive reviews because what other dentist takes the time to text the patients that night to check in on them? Now he did it during his work day, but from the patient's perspective, he sat down at night after work, had dinner with his family, and then went out and started texting his patients to follow up to see if they're okay. Because it was personalized and it's specific to their experience with him, or her, that's gonna make it to where it has more impact and more effect. So if, if this is something you can see working in your business, I encourage you to either reach out to our customer support team that can walk you through it, or get in the mobile app and start playing with it and see how that works. But do make it a part of your, your interactions with your prospects, your customers, your patients, whatever the case may be. Think about in the lead nurturing, in the sales process, in the customer onboarding, or the customer fulfillment, or customer follow-up after they've already completed their interaction with you, they've been a customer and now you wanna get better um, engagement with them, think about how you can use this tool to use automation to follow up at a future date and time, but still get a lot more power, powerful response out of that because if I texted you today saying, hey, how was your trip, but you didn't go on your trip till next week, it doesn't have any impact. But if you go on your trip and then I text you next week, how was your trip, the impact of that message went way up because it was, further down the road than just today or tomorrow, right? So the more that I can go in the future without going too far, I can get more benefit because the person thinks, wow, this person really cares. They took the time to follow up with me and this is very personalized, so it's obviously not automated. Now, there might be other ways that you think that you can, you can use this and that's great. I'm not giving you all the scenarios right here. What I just want you to do is think about how could I use a personalized, scheduled, one-off message in part of my sales process? And it might just be one instance in your entire process that you do it. It may not be that at every, every, every stage of your business you're using this, but you might just try using it in one stage of your business where you feel like, I need to make more deposits into the relationship. If I make more deposits in the relationship, compliance goes up, reciprocity goes up, the person's giving me referrals, they're gonna go leave me a review. And so I wanna think about how can I make these deposits into the relationship with my customer or my prospect? How can I make them feel like I do care because I do, I want them to be successful, but how do I, how do I supercharge that by personalizing my follow-up, but also using automation so this doesn't become a burden or I have to remember things or use my calendar to remind me to do things in the future. I can just do it right now. Once the conversation is over, things are fresh in my mind and do an automated personalized follow-up in the future. And I hope this has been beneficial. If it's, if it's helped you, let me know. Um, I want to, I want to provide content that helps you to identify and look for better ways of creating engagement and connection with your prospects and your customers. As you do that, your ability to increase your, your growth of your business goes up as well. Always think about your relationship with your prospect or your customer. Think about what's, what are they going through as I'm teaching them or sharing information with them so they can make a buying decision to do business with me. And think about how can I impact them in a way where they feel like they, they're someone, that I'm someone they know, like, and trust, that I'm making deposits into that relationship. Um, now, we're trying to eat our own dog food. Over the next few months, you'll start to see more of a personalized follow-up from our team and from myself as well. And the reason I say that is because I've recognized 
parts of our business in our sales process as well as in our new customer onboarding as well as in our customer experience for our existing customers where we can improve in these areas. So this, this training has helped me to recognize, wow, there's, there's two other areas in my business where I'm not already doing that where I should be. And so um, this is something that's been impactful for us in other areas of our business. Like I said, for our new customer onboarding, we started implementing this as well as for our new leads coming in. We're starting to implement this. And I have a couple other businesses where we're using this in, in home services and in construction where communication is, is, is lacking severely in those industries. We're able to really impress the prospect and the customer because of this level of communication. Now, if you just look at your industry and you think about what is the average person in my business doing to connect with and create relationship with their prospect or customer, you'll find that it's not too hard to exceed the average and exceed expectations. Um, and just by exceeding it a little bit, you're gonna have that much more benefit and advantage over your competition. So think about how can I create that connection with that little small effort that I can input into my business to create a dramatic increase in connection and that deposit into the relationship so that when I ask for them to, to do business with me or ask for a referral or ask for a review, all the compliance goes up because I've already made deposits in that relationship. They know that I like them and I care about them. Hopefully they like and trust me as well. And that reciprocity will start to happen in your business as you focus on these things. Um, again, if you have questions, please reach out to our customer support team. Um, they'd love to get on a one-on-one -on -one screen share with you, share some ideas, talk about your strategy and help you out there.